three. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Basis for Autism uh, Peloton. We are continuing to donate. Please remember Venmo, uh, the website, and uh, the Facebook page as well. Uh, my next guest is a teacher in the Abstecan Public School District. He was one of my teachers about nine, year, uh, nine years ago <laughs> uh, when he taught PE. He's with me tonight to talk about what he's been doing this year, teaching special education in the Abstecan School District. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. John White. That's correct. Well, make up. Thank you for having me, bud. Uh, always a pleasure. Always happy to be here uh, and catch up. Um, you know that we're always in constant communication. But uh, yeah, let's let's get after it. So my first question, kind of uh, give the viewers as a sense of your history teaching and education. Okay. Um, well, I started without aging myself a little bit here. Um, about 12 years ago, uh, I worked in the Ventnor uh, school system, teaching health and PE. Um, for a brief time in Ventnor, I was teaching uh, in this in special ed kindergarten and pre-K. Uh, very, very different and new experience for me there. Uh, and then right after uh, I left Ventnor, I, I got my job at, um, at Epsikin doing health and PE there uh, in the middle school. And I've been there ever since. Um, and then since COVID hit uh, this past year and some, some shuffling of the teachers and things, uh, I moved into teaching fifth grade special education, um, math and, and language arts. So it's been a uh, it's been a little bit of a ride for the last 12 years, but overall, I'm, I'm happy where I'm at. I love what I do, um, inspiring, or I should say, hopefully inspiring uh, the young minds. Uh, you know, I, I don't know how much I touched your mind a little bit, because um, when, uh, when, when we'd have class, I don't know if you're even paying attention, but you know how that goes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, we had a lot of fun over that year, and I I still remember meeting you. That uh, when Zap brought me in your office, uh, I want to say that was what July. Of the, it would have had to. Be, it would have had to be in the summer. Yeah, it was definitely. Uh, it was definitely maybe late July, early August. Um, because after I was approved for the position, I, had, I wanted to go in and kind of scope things out and, and see what the layout was and kind of get accustomed to the school. And, and uh, you happened to be there. And it was a, the first student I had interactions with uh, before even coming to the school. So um, that was a, a blessing in disguise. And, and look at where we're at now, you know, a good, what, 10 or 12, who's counting years later, you know, we're still in contact. So it's, um, that's really, really cool to see. Yeah, because uh, you're, you're not, I'm in contact with a couple of teachers that, that I went through the school system with, uh, whether it's uh, Absegan with, with, or ACIT or special services. And it's nice that I still have relationships with teachers because not everyone, not everyone uh, is that uh, fortunate, shall I say. I had yep. a couple of them, um, more so on the high school level, kind of, I mean, I talked to them to a point and then they kind of, we, we went our own separate ways, as I would like to say. So, and you just never know, too. Mm -hmm. Well, exactly. And I mean, fortunate is, is a great word because, you know, it, it is a blessing, um, you know, meeting people 
um, having those, those relationships with people um, throughout your life. You never know when, you know, you're going to run into somebody or you kind of maybe need to call on a favor or, you know, the more people you can meet and the more lives you can touch, you know, that, that's ultimately the goal, you know, to kind of spread that, that joy and that happiness. And whether it's, I see you one time or I see you a thousand times, you know, the, the interaction and the, and the camaraderie is always going to be, is always going to be the same, which is, uh, you know, what, what we strive for. Yeah. Um, so, so uh, I didn't know that in the open, uh, you were teaching preschool and kindergarten before you were teaching gym. Tell people, tell people what that was like, because uh, as I said, I didn't know that till just now. Yeah. Um, well, uh, it brought me back to kind of relearning I guess the whole education system, um, how to how to do the phonics of, of of sounding out words and and counting numbers and and knowing your colors. Um, that was more of the kindergarten aspect, but it was for me. I've always dealt with the middle school level, whether it was in in college, uh, student teaching. Um, so up to up until that point, I really haven't had any interaction with elementary or even. Uh, younger than that in the in the pre-K and the K area. Um, so I was a little hesitant about taking the job uh, for that reason. But I mean, let me tell you, give it give it a week into the into the job. I mean, it, I fell in love with it because I mean, who doesn't like four, five, six year olds? You know, they're they're innocent, they're cute, they're um, they're just adorable and they could do no wrong. And you, you, you might, you might accidentally kind of reinforce the rules or, or yell at them, so to speak. Um, and they're upset, but then they bounce right back and kind of that experience helped to actually shape more of my teaching because, you know, you kind of see where they come from, from younger age, early elementary, as they get up towards later elementary and then into middle school. But it was, um, it was definitely an eye opener, but, and it was a lot of work, um, but I definitely enjoy, enjoyed my time doing, doing the kindergarten and pre-K. Yeah, I mean, that would be an enjoy, enjoyable because you said they're innocent, they could do no wrong to anyone. Uh, next uh, question, give, like if you could compare working in Ventnor to working where you're at now, any differences in like the teaching of special ed? So just in, in, in general from school to school or? If you've seen any changes, if th things of course have evolved over the years and we'll get into the pandemic in a sec. Yeah, um, I mean, honestly the, the the demographic and, and the population um, of, of from Ventnor to Absecon was was very very similar. Um, they were they're a K to eight kind of district, just like Absecon is. Um, and I mean, just coming out of fresh out of college, starting in Ventnor, being blessed and having the opportunity to uh, obtain a teaching position right out of college, well, I was very fortunate. Um, and very grateful for, for having that opportunity and for my time there. But it definitely was a, was a kickstarter in my uh, education process and kind of, kind of building the years of experience. Um, but to correlate to, uh, I mean, Ventnor was, was about, about 12 years ago or so till now. I mean, there's lots have changed. Um, and I mean, that's going to be everywhere as well, um, just as, as the different generations move through the system, um, different accountabilities, but overall, you know, the, the goal of teachers is, is to, you know, is to teach, is, is to touch lives, is to, you know, ultimately change one person's, have an impact on one person's life. And, and, and if there's more, more the better. Um, but, you know, we're, we're in this position, you, know, you talk to any teacher, 
who's who's been around. Um, we're in this position to to touch the lives of of students and, and kind of bring them up into the world. Um, and that's what we're here for. And that's that's ultimately what, what brings us the pleasure of of having the opportunity to kind of be that role model for them, for especially for ones that they may not have a role model to look up to. Um, but you know, it's it's been a blast, and you know, who knows how many more years I have to go, how many more years there that I have left or who knows the circumstance? So we, we got to take it one day at a time, one week, one month, one school year. Um, and each one's going to be different. But you take your experiences from the past and you grow upon them to be better and better, um, ultimately striving for your students to be better and better. Yeah, and that's the point here, friends. We we want to drive home the importance of education. And I'm going to bring this up. And if you think that your child, because we're talking about basis and what a wonderful organization the mosques have, if you think your child may need a little extra help in the school system, don't be afraid to reach out. You have teachers that are specifically is, I shouldn't say design, but specifically educated, such as John is, to teach special education, math, English. Reach out to your districts. They will help you. Yes, uh, great point there, Jacob. I mean, don't, don't hesitate. Um, if one person doesn't know, they'll point you in the right direction, but um, ultimately, we're here to, to service our students um, and give them the best uh, educational opportunity that we can. Um, so don't don't feel that uh, you know holding back is is being beneficial or or not reaching out is being beneficial because um, you know there's there's lots of people throughout each educational institution that's designed and and they're there to 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 help the uh, individualized needs of, of all the students. Exactly, and you were and you were at the presentation I gave, and I, I've given a sim, similar one to FACES, and you need to reach out. That is why we discussed before we started this a few moments ago. That's why you need to have a plan because you need someone, you need, an A specific aid to be put on a child. So it's not, oh, you have A, B, C, D here this day and D, E, F, G another day. It's not going to work. And especially if the child has autism, as we know, if one thing's off, if one thing goes out the window, who knows what will happen? Yeah, so exactly. Um... I mean, if you're if you're getting a, a new aid of some sort multiple days, uh, there's never that a custom. There's never that um, kind of relationship built between uh, the student and the aid. And so, if there's a constant change, it's just going to be more of a setback um, for both the student and for the aid. Um, so, you know, if there's, there's an issue where there is a constant change, maybe reach out, try to find a, a way to get the same one that will help to not only advocate for, for the student, um, but also kind of build that relationship and that rapport so that the student is getting the best services possible throughout the day, each and every day, not just, you know, every other day or once a week. Yeah, like we, we were discussing uh, beforehand, before I started this, one of uh, a friend of ours, well, a colleague of yours and a friend of mine, we, she's out and, and, you, and I'm, I'm glad to hear that they put someone, cons someone that's consistent on her because, hey, they may not know fully, but at least there's a 
there's a body there if if she needs assistance. And I can just I mean just think about the people that that we interact with on a daily basis. If if you're meeting somebody new each and every day, you're more hesitant to kind of just sit back and not really kind of come out of your shell. But if you're interacting with the same person every day, um, you're more likely to kind of open up and, and express feelings and, and it just makes that relationship that much better. I mean, I, I mean, if I had to talk to you every day, listen, I don't know what I would do, my man, but no, I'm only kidding. Uh, I could probably talk to you every day, although I would do the talking and you'd probably end up falling asleep on me and I had to wake you up a couple of times. But uh, no, it would be a, it would be a pleasure to talk to you every day. And and uh, and we did talk to each other every day for one year. That's I still correct. I wish I had you for longer than a year, but okay. Well, I mean, also like we said too, you never know who you're gonna touch, and and you know, being that I only had you for one year out of your, uh, what, what were you there? Nine years in Absecon. I had at, you for your last yeah, year. I was there nine years. I was actually there. Twelve. I was there twelve years. Twelve years, and I had you for one of them your last year, and 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 look at us look now. At so us now. You never know who, who you're going to touch and, and, and who you're going to inspire and who you're going to just continue that, that bond and that relationship with. And yeah, I mean, and we discovered we knew people that I didn't think you knew and people you certainly didn't think I knew. Exactly. <laughs> it's, uh-huh. it's a who's who world. Um, I'm going to jump into the pandemic and what you're doing now. Um, so kind of give the viewers a sense of what you're doing now, because I, I had heard, I don't know if this is true, but I heard you were jumping from at a point, fifth to sixth to eighth, were you in all four grade levels? Was someone, uh, I must have misheard that. But anyway, tell them what you're doing now. Well, uh, currently, uh, what I've been doing since September, um, I've been an in-class support or in-class resource for a fifth grade um, math class. Um, that is a, a class that is um, a regular ed class that's mixed in with some students with, you know, either an IEP or a 504. Um, so kind of offering support to um, students with uh, special needs, but also the regular ed students. Um, I would teach a um, inclusion class, which was a mix of, this is where maybe kind of the communication got haywire. The, the, the inclusion class had students that were in fifth, sixth, um, and eighth. So they were combined in the same classroom setting. Yeah, that's where I... I got confused. Someone told me, and I forget who it was. Somebody told me he's teaching fifth, sixth, eighth <laughs> grade all at once. So I said, oh, "Okay, I'll have to talk to him about this because," and now I understand it because you said inclusion, and I know what that is. See, they they left key pieces of the puzzle <laughs> out, and I'm like. Okay, let's picture this. He's teaching fifth, sixth, and eighth grade all at once. I mean, yeah, it was, uh, I mean, so basically, uh, and, uh, kind of throughout the school year, it, it kind of did feel like that because, you know, um, the students that I had in eighth grade had a little bit more knowledge, a little more background concept development than those that were in sixth and even those that were in fifth. So, I mean, adjusting and differentiating the, the lessons, um, it was kind of like teaching all three grade levels at one time. Um, but over, over the course of the year, I mean, just having them in one class, um, it started out where I had one student in the class in person and the rest of them were in a, in a separate time and virtual. Uh, but once we kind of were able to open up the restrictions and um, have more students into the school building. I did 
get all of my students back, which was a, a blessing uh, because I think they, they definitely need to be in the school building in the structure of the, of the classroom. So I had them back all about February into March. Um, I started having them all back into the classroom setting. Um, and then later on in, in the school day, I would uh, te uh, teach another ICR class in class resource, but it was all virtual and that was for language arts. So that was teaching along with a, a regular teacher on Google Meets um, and, and, and helping um, not only again, the regular ed students, but the special ed students in, in that classroom setting, uh, kind of differentiating things uh, based upon their needs and abilities. But yeah, basically that was, that was my day starting uh, the first day in September and we're, we're down to, we're down to two more days left, June 18th. It's been a whole year. I can't believe it. It's crazy how time has flown by. Uh, you mentioned teaching virtually. That's going to lead into my next question. It, and this is going to sound, it probably is. Is it hard being a support when you're teaching virtually? I would have said yes right away, but I want your uh, being support being as being a support while teaching virtually on the screen because you can't physically help absolutely i mean absolutely i mean you know i mean kind of just to to fast forward we had um we had a, a on monday this past monday we had all of our um our fifth grade virtual students that we've had we invited them to to uh, have have come come to the school, we had an outside. It was a beautiful day. Kind of have some some pizza and kind of like meet and greet all over again in person though. Um, but it was it was great to see the students that were able to make it and see them kind of face to face, like right in front of us rather than through the camera, um, because it was a whole. I mean, it's been a whole year, but it's been longer than that since they were actually back at the school building for any type of school uh, function or event. Um, but definitely uh, going back to your question, you know, providing support, um, let alone teaching virtually was, was just a, a daily grind, um, so to speak. There was, I mean, each day, just like in the in the in the in the school in the school building, each day is going to be different. Um, you don't know kind of what you're going to get into, how 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 students or how how colleagues or whatever the case may be, how anybody's feeling that day. Some days are good, some days are bad, but ultimately it was difficult because you couldn't connect like you wanted to with the virtual learners, whether their cameras were off. Um, whether, you know, you couldn't really get the sense of what they wanted to come across and come and say, um, you couldn't see the work that they were, were doing kind of physically in front of them to, to offer that, that support and that help. But it was definitely a long and strenuous grind. Um, would I, would I do it all over again? If we had to. Of course. I mean, that's that's why we're here. Of course, we would do it. But would I would I like to? No, because I think the, the students need to be in the school building. They need that structure. They need that support, that that one on one support, and they need that um, just that that kind of environment. They need to have that social interaction amongst their peers, their teachers. Um, they need they need that environment back. Yeah, they do, and. Not to jump off track here about myself, but I I had to do the virtual learning and the whole virtual thing and the packets and all this all this stuff. All meanwhile, after I had a little something going on in mid March, so I came back in the in April after Easter, and and you know all my stuff was virtual. PT, OT, you're all sitting here talking to each other on Zoom. 
And if you need anything, you have to physically relay to each other. You cannot talk to each other. And I, I specifically said this, and I was brutally honest. I said, thank, thank, thank God I'm not doing virtual learning anymore anymore because the, the, the lack of communication, and it's not just in school systems, it's mm -hmm. everywhere. It's, it's, not, it's not there a lot of the times. And when it is there, how clear is it? Yeah, I agree. I agree 100%. I mean, just, again, having that communication, having that the interaction, I mean, how to kind of talk through problems, how to problem solve. Uh, it, it's just, and like you said, it's not just in the school systems. Uh, it's it's kind of going backwards a couple steps in, in, in a lot of different branches and, and areas uh, throughout our, um, our culture. Um, but one of the biggest spots to kind of get it back on track is going to be in the school systems because as we keep pushing new new generations through i mean they're the ones who are going to be going out into the into the workforce and into those positions to kind of you know re re reinvent those steps and and to kind of bring bring life back in, in into those situations and it's and I hate to say this, but it's not going to happen overnight. Mm, um, no way. No, I, I would imagine it could at, least, at least two to three years. Yeah, because it, yeah, I think the, and I feel sorry for this, for my one cousin who's still in elementary school going to a second grade in the fall. I'm sorry for the younger generations that are in education that they're going to have to, uh, I shouldn't say struggle, but have some form of difficulty mm -hmm. for at least the next three years, if not longer. Yeah, because they're kind of, you know, a full school year is, is long in the, is long is is long in itself, excuse me. Um, so you think now they're they're going to try to like add more into the school year in the same amount of days to try to kind of slowly bring back to where we were before the pandemic and try to kind of increase and, and jump forward as much as we can in, in the same amount of time. And it just makes it, it's going to be that much more difficult, not only for the teachers, but more so for, like you said, the students and the younger students that are still developing and still, still learning the phonics system and, and, the, and the numerical system and, you know, interacting and social and uh, emotional learning and things of that nature. Yeah, and you know, I I sit here. I I not only do I feel bad for the generations, but I wonder for the future. I seriously wonder, day and night, you, it, because you don't know. It, it's a game of what's what. Here's what today brought. Let's see what tomorrow's gonna bring. Mm -hmm. And it's virtual learning now. We all know Zoom isn't going anywhere, even after COVID. Is virtual learning now going to be a thing of the future? I certainly, uh, I certainly hope not, unless it's it's needed in in particular circumstances. Um, I mean, currently, from what our, our governor has mentioned, it's it's not a thing that's going to be initiated in the fall. So that's a great sign, um, because it just you know it just creates that much more uh, difficulty with those gaps that we're, we're speaking of, um, if you continue to do it for a long period of time. But it's nice to have for those, those um, emergency situations where maybe we're not in school for, for this or that reason, 
but we can still connect and reach our students and kind of not necessarily skip a beat. Um, but for a longer, longer period of time, I, I would hopefully think it's after after this run of a, of a year and a half that's going to become obsolete. But who knows? I mean, yeah, it's yeah. I out of all the things I would like to become obsolete, that's tops on my list. You can you can keep. The certain things that we've done, but please, I don't want to say virtual learning doesn't. Oh, I have to be careful how I put this. Virtual learning serves a purpose, but it's not the best. It's not best practice. Yeah, and and I mean to kind of jump in there. There's a, I mean, listen, we we were kind of all thrown into this with no other choice. And there's vast amount of educators, not just in in our area down here in South Jersey, but across the state, across the country, across the world, um, educators and students alone that grinded through, adjusted, over over adapted through. Is that the right word? Over, they over adjusted, over adapt, overcome to these situations, um, and they did strive they did succeed in areas so it's not there's a huge negative emphasis on it but there are going to be quite uh, a, a few quite amount of people students that um, are going to be a little bit behind because of virtual learning but overall I think um, just kind of speaking with uh, colleagues of other districts there are some that you know, are going to fare out well. So it's it's not that it's we're totally behind the eight ball, but we're going to need to do some work to get to get back to where we were. Exactly, and I, as you were saying, working to get back back to where you were. I almost wonder, is it a thing to be dis discussed come September? I know a lot of people don't want to do it, but if your child was virtual. Uh, repeating the, uh, excuse me, the grade. Yeah, I mean, well, I guess we'll have to Wait. take it, we'll take it one one day, one week, one month at a time until we get closer to that next year. But we got to also put a close on our, on our this school year before we, we go into next school year. Oh, yeah, we do. Uh, guess, guess this 2020. 2020, 2021 year. Goodbye. Give it a big kiss. <laughs> uh, what, I don't know about that. I think I would just open the door and then shut the door. Yeah, open, <laughs> open the door, roll it out, and wipe the slate clean. Um, while we're on, on, on the topics of education, was there some? Was there something that told you that said, I think I want to teach special ed? Was there someone specific? Were you somewhere in the school system? Um, you mean like just in general or this year alone or? Just as a generalized. Generalized statement? No, I mean, uh, back in college, um, I knew finding and obtaining a teaching job was going to be difficult, not alone, not only in health and physical education. Um, so I kind of looked at my options and I figured, hey, why not pursue a, a special education certification as well, since I'm kind of still here in, in school finishing up. Um, and lo and behold, I did that. I was able to obtain that certification. And that was a good avenue to help me uh, land my first teaching job right out of college. And although that was in health and physical education, um, having that background, that knowledge from the special ed, ed cert kind of helped me differentiate my teaching in, in that field. Uh, but then the next year, like I said, I, I did have to utilize that, that special education certification um, in pre-K and K. Um, I think it was a great uh, 
resource and and, and uh, kind of resume builder for me for when I when I applied for Epsecan. Um, ultimately, uh, obtaining that health and physical education job, but having that in my kind of background definitely definitely um, was 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 great to have because it gives me a broader uh, spectrum to kind of visualize and view and, and, and adapt and differentiate um, my teaching and just ultimately the goal to touch as many students uh, lives as we can and, and to give them the best educational uh, opportunity that they can to succeed. Right, because um, if you let's just say you didn't have the special ed degree and you were in a situation such as this, this year, who knows where you could have been placed. Yeah, who knows what I would be doing or, or where I would be um, for this school year if, if I didn't have the certification, uh, what I would be doing. Um, but having it, looking back, was it a long school year? Yes. Were we able to kind of make it out alive? Yes. Um, and did it provide me with a, a different uh, viewpoint on uh, teaching? Yes. And, and you know, every so often, it's always, always good to reflect back and, and kind of to weigh the pros and the cons of, of certain teaching things and teaching styles that you had but it'll, it allowed me to view teaching from a different standpoint, not just in, in my kind of gymnasium. Um, so hopefully uh, that'll help me moving forward for when I do get back into the gym for health and, and phys ed, it'll help me to kind of reinvent myself as a, as a teacher um, in that field and, you know, go from there. Yeah. And, as we said in the open, cross your fingers, you'll get to go back to gym because, you know, that's where you are. Not to say that fifth grade special ed isn't in your, was it, wasn't your element before, but it is, but it's in the element now. But if you had to, if you had to go back, back there, say a few years down the line, you could, but gym is more your guy. It's my specialty, you know, it's, <laughs> it's ultimately what, you know, I, I just love to focus on the, you know, the, the health aspect, uh, the fitness aspect uh, of it, you know, kind of seeing the students transform from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, seeing them um, put the effort in and really kind of understand the the struggles but also the successes of uh you know it's not just rolling out a couple balls and having fun um you know trying to really educate them on the aspects of how to how to keep yourself healthy so that you can live a longer life um how to enjoy those different fitness activities uh, although i know at, at the middle school age it's always a grueling and daunting task but that's why we're here is we're here to kind of make it as enjoyable as we can so that later on down the line when i when i have students come back or uh, i see them you know out or i read about it in the paper you know it, it does it does strike a a good a good uh note on the heart because you know that's what they kind of continue to pursue and they and they wanted to do that um and a lot of them reflect on i wish i wish i would have done more i wish i could have done this and i say well we can't go backwards but what you can do is continue to take that mentality and move forward to now improve your life from here going forward not that they were at a bad life but you know, from the from the health and fitness aspect, it's always tough to hit middle schoolers, but we, you know, we try and some some kind of latch on and love it. Others are in the middle, and some are, are not so much. But we do the best we can. 
Yeah, and that's all you can do. Uh, th this will be my my last uh, question. Um, you could give parents any as the year comes to a close. You could give parents any advice, uh, ways to help their child, especially if they've been in virtual settings. Uh, going back full time in September. Just uh, words of advice, encouragement. Yeah, I think, I think, um, I mean, especially the students that were virtual who don't have, it didn't, or I shouldn't say, didn't have the, the school setting environment, the interactions, um, you know, find ways to just continually encourage them. Uh, what I what I kind of realized throughout my years in education, you know, as tough as things may be, um, kids are still kids, and they need that constant encouragement. They need that constant love, and they need that constant support. Um, things are not easy. Okay, they pick up on a lot of things that happen around them. All right, and since then, a lot of times they kind of hold that true to themselves, and that's another stressor on their lives that they don't need because they are just kids. Um, so just really, and it's not going to be easy at times. It's going to be difficult, but really, really give them that support that that they need, and and the rest of it will fall into place. The the math, the language arts, the science, social studies, the, the arts, um, those will fall into place in time, but ultimately be there for them, kind of positively construct them, bring them up, um, and, and ultimately, you know, be, be, be their parent. You know, we, we, you don't need to be their friend, uh, be their parent. Um, they need that more than anything. There's lots of friends they have at school. Um, coming back, they, they just need their parent and their parents and they, they need you there for that support. That, that's probably my, my biggest, my biggest uh, take on, on what parents can do. Um, and on the flip side, kind of like what we talked about too, reach out, reach out and advocate for your, for your child or your children, um, you know, set them up, help set them up, um, ways, be in constant communication as an educator, uh, as much as we try to reach out to parents on a consistent basis, don't feel free to, or feel free, should I say don't feel, feel free to reach out to us as well. If you're noticing something or, or, or you're finding something that's working at home, uh, because ultimately we want the best for the children. And, you know, if we can work collaboratively with parents um, on a consistent basis, uh, that, that's, that's gonna be the best outcome. Yes, and uh, friends, uh... The telethon happened in March. Please donate if you need support. Don't be afraid to reach out. The Faces for Autism support group is on Facebook. The Faces for Autism Facebook page is out there. I am out there as an admin. They have my contact information. I'm sure I could give you educators contact information where as I like to say and I've said this before we're all in this together and if you don't step up if you don't not only step up but speak up things aren't going to get done and as John and I were saying in the beginning of this that is why you need support such as a person-centered plan, which I will be giving a presentation to, the, to your basis group relatively soon over the summer. 
but please, friends, please donate to Faces for Autism, Venmo, get on the phone, dial, there's a button on the website, there are buttons everywhere. Things may be getting back to normal, but please donate.